How's everybody doing today? Almost ready. Hang on. We're going to do some uh, underpainting stuff today. We're going to do two different, two different pieces, actually. One of them is going to take longer than the other. But I'm going to show you today. Um, I'm going to do a, a painting I've been wanting to do by, uh, well, more or less, you know, sometimes you get started on things and, and, uh, you know, if you're painting, if you paint like me, I kind of get started and, and, and I'm painting along with somebody like Nick Hankins and next thing you know, I'm off on my own thing, but I'm going to start off, <laughs> I'm going to start off painting, uh, the underpainting for uh, a video, uh, another painting for a painting that was done on a video by Yovette Bronson. Um, so if you look at Yovette's page, which is Painting with Yovette, uh, she has got some wonderful videos in there. And this is going to be like a waterfall scene. We're just going to do the underpainting for it today. But um, I'll talk a little bit about that. And then, you know, it's going to be done in acrylics, that part. And then we'll come back and do oil paintings on another stream, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Um, I want to let that acrylic dry up really well before we put oils over the top. And then we're going to do another canvas prep. We're going to do um, a white canvas um, that we're eventually going to turn into a black canvas, but we're going to place a moon, a great big moon. I'll show you. You'll be able to see it really good on this. We're going to be able to print put a great big giant moon in the middle of a black can, in the middle of a uh, white canvas with black canvas around it. I'm going to show you how to get some fairly crisp, neat, neat crisp lines out of that, and then we'll come back. And we're going to do um, kind of a Halloween painting around that. So um, we probably won't do both of those on the same stream, but they are what they are. If you're out there, say hello so I'll know you're there. And I'll be glad to talk right back to you. Um, today, perhaps pretty easy. I'm sorry I'm a little later than usual, but I went to the art store. If you're an artist, you know how that goes. So... <laughs> And my wife is out of town, so I didn't have anybody tell me I couldn't buy anything. So, uh -huh. I bought a few things. I bought some canvas stretchers and what else did I buy? I don't know. I bought some other stuff. Oh, I bought some paint, but I mostly brought acrylic paints because I have enough oil paints to last me from now till forever. All right, so let's get going on this. Um, if you want to do this painting, if you want to see it done in its original form. Just go to Yovette's page on YouTube. You'll see it there. She does. She does a fabulous job. Now I asked her if I could stream this painting. Um, I thought it might be interesting for a, you know a streaming artist who's doing instructionals to see a little bit about what the students take away. Now Yovette, in all fairness, I've only watched it uh, a couple of times. So if I forget, if I forget a step, forgive me. All right, guys. So I have a little jar of water here. Just plain water. I've got a, a natural sponge. Um, I've got some Grumbacher Titanium White Acrylic and some Liquitex uh, Mars Black Acrylic, which we'll use that. And we're going to kind of make some. Um, we'll make some black and white and gray. That's really all you're going to need for this. As we go. So, and I have. I'm just putting it on a little paper plate. We'll start with that and kind of work our way down. So I'm kind of squeezing the excess water out of my sponge. Alright, so let me tell you what though, let me kind of mm -hmm, mm -hmm, spread this paint out a little bit. Well, that's okay. I don't really need to do that. So I'm just going to kind of take the sponge and kind of dip it on the edges like this. I don't want to get a whole lot of paint on there. And then I'm going to kind of take it to the side and dab it. Kind of work it into the sponge a little bit. This white. Just white. Just white acrylic. So we're going to start making some landscapes. We're going to, now, when you put this sponge on here, don't smash it. If you smash it, you're just going to kind of crush it into the canvas, and that's not going to do what you want it to do. So, all right, so we're going to touch this really light. We're just going to kind of start in the center, maybe just a little bit to the side, like right over here. And we'll just kind of start putting this around in a circle. Another thing, I just did it right here, so I'll remind you not to do it. Is don't, don't drag it when you're tapping it. Okay. 
tap, tap, tap. We're going to use this to create some background. You can see it kind of goes a long way. We'll kind of let it get a little bit darker to edge. It's not that big a deal. And you can see, as lightly as I've been tapping, as much as I've covered, there's still quite a bit of paint, paint in this sponge. If you guys have any questions, spit them up. I'm going to paint with my other hand for a while. I'm a two-handed painter. An equal opportunity on my painter. Alright. So, a little bit more right there. A little bit more right there. Alright. Now, I'm really going to want... This is going to be the major lightest area of this, of this painting when, it, when, we, when we start to put oils in on the top of it. So we'll go back over that now. But it's easier to, 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 to put more on than it is to take it off. So a little bit of a tighter circle. We'll do the same thing. We'll kind of take it out and out. So we're just lightly tapping with this sponge. Don't smush it down, don't smush it down. So we have a kind of a nice day here in Kentucky. It's, uh, it's in the 60s. So tomorrow, that means instead of painting, I have to cut grass and plant tulips. So i to try to get this <laughs> try to get this done some today. Right, so I'm just gonna, just gonna bring this on out a little bit more. So not quite, you see it's still kind of Mostly light in the middle, and that's what we want. We'll, we'll, we'll put some more on there in a second. And we'll back to the middle. This will provide some good texture in here. So we have a little forest. If you haven't seen Yobet's painting on this, it's, it's pretty neat. A little waterfall in there. Some stones. We're going to do the stones too today. So I'm just now I'm kind of concentrating on the middle. Take a little bit more of this back out. Because as it dries, it's going to, uh, the acrylic's uh, going to get a little bit darker as it dries. So you want to kind of go back over the edges. A little bit. I don't want to put too much in there. I think maybe one more time on the center. Let's do that. Right. So now you can see why I want to let this dry for 24 hours before I try to put oils over the top of it. But I will put acrylic over the top of it here. Let's kind of create a little bit of curve. There we go. Alright. Okay. So let's put that down for a second. I'm going to pick up some some of this uh, Liquitex black. This is Mars black. Uh, I prefer to use lamp black um, because it takes less, but this will work. This will work for what we use it for. All right. So we're just going to take a little bit of this Mars black and some of this white. Let me find my knife here. We're just going to take a scoop of this each. off to the side here. Some of this black. Mix it up here. Mm, a lot more white than that. I'm surprised how smart as black is. A little more powerful than I thought, but that's okay. Right. So we're just going to mix this up and make a, a gray. Then I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this gray in half over there. Move that to the side of the table over there. And unlike when I'm using oils, I don't want to create, I don't want to create a, um, I don't want to have it laced. I don't want to have that. So I just want to make a little bit lighter gray on one side. Just play it. I think I like it better. All right. I'm just drop that in my, my uh, 
kind of thing. So I'm going to use the same sponge. I'm not going to bother to clean it out. I'm just going to tap some of this black in it. I mean, some of this stuff gray. We're just going to go right around the edges. Right around the edges. I'm just going to pull this out make it a little bit darker out here on this edge. So sort just of tap, tap, tap in it. Don't scrunch it. Don't scrunch it. Don't get excited. Because it is fun. It is fun to do this. I'm going to curve this in just a little bit more. And maybe a little bit more on this side too. Alright. Alright. Then we'll pick up some black. Just a little bit of black. Just kind of darken the edges just a little bit. Right on the outside edge like that. Maybe add just a couple of little shadow areas like that. Then I'm going to take the tip of it and I'm just going to kind of put some places here where I'm put some bushes and stuff. I don't know exactly where the bushes are going to go, then I'll figure that out later. I'll figure that out when we start all painting. Alright, alright. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm done with that plate. Use a different one. Let me clean my knife off here. I'm going to clean the sponge out. Don't set your sponge aside and forget about it, because if you do, you that acrylic will dry in there really quick. Emily Jean! Hello, girlfriend. How are you, darling? Emily, I got to go to the art store all by myself today. I had no adult supervision. I'm sure it was incredibly bad for my finances. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. All right. So, I'm not emul... I don't want to try to emulate... Emulate... No, Emily, by painting on the back of my hand, so let me get all this paint off my fingers. Alright. Let me clean this knife off. So that's looking pretty good. But we got we still got a long way to go here on the underpainting. So I think we'll take a couple of minutes here. You know what? I think I'll bring that plate back now that I'm thinking about it. I've got a to put my sponge in here after I told y'all don't forget to put your sponge in there. Right. So just kind of dunking it in the jar and leaving it there for now. Alright, so let me kind of chalk out kind of the rest of this painting so you guys can kind of get an image for what, what we're going to be doing here. Do I have a chalk pen? No, I have a pencil. Alright, so I have a chalk pencil here. Let's do that. So we're going to have trees up in here. We're going to have a nice little waterfall come down like right about here. And then it's going to kind of Wind around like this. And curve around that way. So it's going to kind of wind around like this and curve around that way. Alright? So we'll have, you know, hills. We'll have some bushes and some hills on the side. Maybe probably a little bit of a cliff right there. So, you know, it gives you an idea. Of, so we'll have a bunch of trees in here. Underpainted trees and then we'll overpaint them with oils. I can't really draw up there, but we might roughen up this a little bit. This, this make it a little more crooked than that, but we'll see. We'll see. Hi, Pat. Emily, you, you at work? Or are you home already? Well, I don't know already, since I don't know what time you went to work. But are you home? I guess I should say. All right. So let's let's uh, let's put some stones in here. Which I I guess I can use this pitiful pile of messed up paint. So what I'm going to do, I want to put a bunch of stones in here. So it's an awful big little brush. Um, it's a number six. I mean, I prefer to use like a number three. I don't know what this one is, but this one's smaller. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up some of this white. Pick up some of this gray on the other side. And we're gonna put some stones in here. So we're just gonna kind of turn the brush like this, 
and we're just going to kind of tilt it just a little bit and then just kind of clunk it. So if you watch me paint stones before, it's the same technique as oil painting, just not as, well, I don't know, I guess it's the same. Okay, I think it needs to be a little, a little bit darker than that. Let's pick up some darker, let's go darker gray. Now we're going to do this for several times so we don't have to, we don't have to keep, we don't have to worry about it too much. About where there's a hole and where there's not a hole. Or, you know, that kind of stuff. Can you guys can you guys see that at all while I'm doing it? It's always kind of. Let's put some in here, here, and there. Let me put a bunch of stones in here. I want to give them. Let me give these guys up here a little bit of a chance to dry. I want to put some more on with white. It's looking pretty good. Let's put some more up here. So maybe it's like Let's try it again. Hey, Gary Jenkins. How are you today, sir? So I'm just going to kind of move these around because I don't want to create. I don't want to create a, a pattern. I'm kind of getting that a little bit more of a pattern than I want to see. This brush is not performing as well as I hope. Maybe the artist is not performing, I don't know. I'm going to keep putting them on there. Let me tell you what, let's just wipe this brush out. My daughter came and cleaned my studio last weekend. <laughs> and as much as I appreciate the fact she cleaned my studio, I can't find crap in here anymore. She's got it all organized, except I just don't know how it is. Alright, let's try this. So make sure when you paint these that you have you know a bunch of different size ones. You want some big ones and some little ones like that. Some big ones. Tell you what, I'm gonna put this brush aside. I'm, gonna move, move the, I'm actually gonna move to this larger fan brush. I mean this larger filament brush and try it a little better. So just see if I like it better. We'll see. This is a brand new brush. I just bought this today at the art store. One of, th one of the things I, I got from the art store. I love going to the art store. Oh my god. Probably the last thing in the world I need to do is go to the art store by myself. Hmm. Just no, no supervision. I'm not Hey Rosemary, how are you today, young lady? I was just saying, I got started late today because I was under the art store. My wife is out of town this week. And I was like, oh, I think I'll just run down to the art store, just peruse it. Oh, jeez, shit with them in it. I hope everybody doesn't have as much trouble walking away from art supplies as I do. Alright. Alright, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's get a couple, let's, let's put a couple more of these, these in here, and then we're going to...
you know, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty darn well, I guess. I uh, had to go for my, I'm a vet, so I had to go for my uh, annual physical this week. It, eh, I can't say that went well. <laughs> so, you know, in November I have a bunch of tests that I have to go in for. But, you know, it is what it is. It just is what it is. You know, if you if you want to paint stones in your painting, you, you kind of have to like it because it takes it takes a while. So I'm just moving back up in here, I'm creating some more stones over top of these other stones. Cause that's how stones do. I think I put a little a couple dark ones. Let's try a couple dark ones here. Put a couple dark ones in here. Make this a little more shadowed. Yeah. Let's kind of put these underneath, and then we'll put some other ones on top of them. Da, da, da. Now, you don't have to use um, gray or black and white. You can use brown and gray. Actually, maybe I will use a little bit of brown later. A couple of stones, we'll see. Again, for those of you who just joined, we are recreating a painting that was done by Yvette Bronson on her uh, YouTube channel, with her permission. I just really like this. I, I like the underpainting part, and I like the... I thought that was fun. That looked like it could be fun. So I asked her if I could use it. She said yeah. So hopefully she'll tune in here before we get done. It, it might be kind of interesting for um, YouTube, YouTube streamers to kind of just see what, you know, how, how well did the how well did the lesson translate? I know I know I'm always interested by that. Da -da 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 -da. Let's put a few more stones in here, and then we'll move on. So we're gonna do we're gonna do two canvas preps today. We're gonna do the a little bit of a moon kind of a thing in a minute, in a little while. Not in a minute, but in a little while. Mm -hmm. In here I'll probably add more stones to this when I do my uh, when I start to put oils in over the top of this. Okay, now that I've done a couple hundred of them, I see what I'm really kind of starting to pick this up. Finally, getting the brush to kind of perform. Mm -hmm. We'll paint over some of these, of course, when we do the oil painting. That black on the bottom seems to kind of speak to me here, so let's, oops, almost did it backwards. And it's okay to kind of overlap stones, if you, if you actually you probably should overlap stones. Because that's how they are in a creek. You need some little ones to go in here. You might decide you want to put another big one somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's about enough for now. But let's kind of fill in a couple little holes here, real quick. All right. Hi, Elise. How are you? still be able to use some of that paint off of that. Let me clean my brush out. I'm going to change brushes. <laughs> Hang on guys, I didn't set my paper towel. Oh! Okay, that's alright, don't go away. We'll get you back up here in a second. I got everything this time now. All right, back you go. Sorry, guys. This is what you get when you get something for free. All right, so let's 
All right, hang on. Let me grab a paper towels. <sighs> My daughter is an expert organizer, but me being able to find what she where she puts stuff is sometimes a challenge. All right, let's get you back in. Get you back right. Hey Tom. Can you guys still hear me okay? Here comes your vet. Here comes your vet. Alright. So let's put a couple, a little bit lighter ones in here, a couple places. I'm just kind of thinking where the, the light is. Hang on, Pat. Move it. There's really nothing down on the bottom of the picture yet. Yet. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now we put some trees in here. So I'm going to use a script liner. No, yo, vet. I was like, oh man, I told her what it was going to be, but then I was late, and I thought, well, I was late, so maybe she didn't, maybe she didn't get it. But no, here you are. All right, so I'm going to take a little, we'll use a flat brush here in just a second. No, no, I'll just use this. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm just going to kind of create a little. I want to kind of curve that creek some more. I want to curve a little more narrow right in here. Let's cover up a few more rocks, but that's okay. Just really wanted a little bit more curvature than that. Here we go. And that doesn't matter because we're just kind of. That Mars black up there right in there. I usually start at 3.30. Yeah. To start at 3.30 on Wednesdays or Sundays or sometimes both. Today though, I was going to the art store unsupervised. So I got home a little late. <laughs> Alright, let's start working on this. Start thinking about some, putting some trees in here. So try this new brush I just got. We'll see how this goes. Now I'll move these trees forward and backward later, depending you know, when I'm doing the whole part. So I'll probably start them all down lower and then I'll change their depth when I'm painting. So let's just kind of that's kinda that's kinda okay. I just got this brush today. I was thinking about doing this painting and I was like, oh, you know what? So I'm gonna make this tree a little bigger, of course, but I'll go out here on the side. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using I'm thinning it down just a little bit. I'm using some water to do that. Um yeah, Eastern Time, you're three out, well, let's see, you're Central, are you on Mountain Time or, or Pacific Time? Central's, Central's one hour behind us, Pacific is two hours behind, no, uh, Central's two hours behind us, 
Pacific's three hours behind us, right? So that would be 12.30, 12.30 your time. All right, I want to I add a little squiggle to this tree. I'm not going to be hurrying along these trees too much because I know over the top of some acrylic is drying, so they're a little bit sticky, it's a little bit sticky. That's okay. That's kind of what you want, right? Okay, well, that's kind of what you want, even if you don't know. But <laughs> it's kind of what I want. All right, let's, let's add a couple more. We're not going to stick a tremendous number of trees in here today, but I'll probably add some more when I get... I'm gonna go with oils, but we'll see. We'll get some more back in here. I find when I'm using a liner brush that the, the uh, I like to draw my tree trunks in phases. We may go back and fiddle with these rocks a little bit more, I don't know. Because uh, remember I said I want maybe throw some a little bit of brown in there with them, but I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Alright, so we'll just kind of let this branch go. Kind of make a couple little squiggles out here. Most of this will get painted over before we're done. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of black in with this gray. Make it a little bit darker this time, this piece. Okay. Uh, let's put another tree we can light right here. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, you guys can hear me. Uh, I, I bet my mic connector when I knocked it over a minute ago. But uh, I want this to be kind of a little tree. Alright. Mm -hmm. Because aren't, aren't you in, I forget, are you in Oregon or Washington State? I want to, I'm thinking you're in Oregon, but I don't, I can't remember. I might notice I, I changed hands again. So I've told everybody a little bit they should yeah, I thought it was in Oregon. Are all the fires out there now? Are you guys like is it is it much better? Has it started raining or something? It looks like the last couple of videos behind you, it looked like the sky was pretty clear. I'm praying for you a lot. So I hope it's helping. I wanna have like one. Yeah, so I'll do that with a darker tree. going to put some lighter cut trees in here. I was just thinking here, here in Kentucky, um, we have some beautiful, just gorgeous white trees. They're called sycamores. Man, they are putting on a show right now because starting to lose their leaves and uh, when when they do uh, their bark is also peeling and they are just as white they're just as white as they can be they're so pretty I mean they're just like glow-in-the-dark white they're so pretty I went out last year and shot some pictures of them So you'll bet I told everybody they need need to turn into your channel. Hey Gene. I'm gonna do like you, I'm gonna do this in two parts. I'm gonna do another canvas prep here a little bit. About I'm gonna do a Halloween picture. Before my wife comes home to add to her Halloween decorations. We have 
I don't know if you guys saw my video yesterday or day four yesterday when we were doing uh, um, Christmas houses. I, I do. I used to do ceramics. Well, I still do ceramics, but here where I live, ceramic shops are, are all but they're actually they they are obsolete. They're just gone. There's none in the whole state. But I still have quite a bit of stuff that I poured because I used to pour myself in. Uh, I was doing some Christmas villages, so we have quite a bit of, of Halloween stuff. And, Holiday stuff. Oop, that will carry away with that guy. Well, let's just. It's okay. Let's make this branch bigger. And I'm just kind of stretch it on out here. And let's just let's just kind of put a couple of little things out here. Do -do -do. Yep, all that stuff will get painted over, but that's okay. Just kind of put some, you know, some branches out there. Indications of some tree trunks. I like this brush, it's, it seems to be working pretty good. Alright. Now, let's see. So the waterfall is going to be like right there. So I need a tree. I need a big tree. I need this tree to be bigger though. I, I need this tree. This tree needs to be bigger and fatter. So let's just get... Now... As I'm moving this brush across, the, I'm, I'm lifting up, but I'm also turning it like this in my fingers. And that'll help it twist and just kind of give you those finer, finer lines. Might try that. Might try that if, if you're having trouble making those fine lines. Let's put another big tree, but I want this tree. Let's see. How do I want this tree? I want this tree to just like start on the corner and then kind of curve into the picture. It's a curvy tree. It's a curvy tree. See, this isn't even really a bravery test because, you know, you can paint right over acrylics. <laughs> Alright, so let's give it a big branch right here, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the top of that tree. I'm going to start making like. We're going to put some leaves and stuff on this later, so it doesn't really matter too much about the branching structure. I just use branching structure to give me a Give me an idea of where I want to put the leaves. So let's kind of let's have another branch like like that. Let's just kind of get this big, a little thicker. Here we go, right there. Then we'll get this. Hey Kelly Lee, this is actually um, Yvette Bronson, who's on here with us, actually did a YouTube painting doing this painting, and we're just recreating some stuff that she did, um, with my own little kind of twist to it, but we're going to have a waterfall in here, of course, once I start painting with the oils, Lord, Lord knows where it's <laughs> liable to go, and I have a... Hmm, I get rolling and the paint kind of starts talking to me and I sometimes I don't end up with what I'm starting off with. Alright, so this tree's all bent and gnarled. I like that. That's a, that's a bendy tree. Somebody stepped on this guy when he was a baby. He's all crooked. Let's give him a little bit bigger trunk. Let's curve him around. So really the main thing, I'm trying to curve these trees into the center to kind of draw the Keep his eye into it. Whatever we can do. The centerpiece is going to be a waterfall. Mm. You can add as many of these little sticks and stuff as, as you want. You know, to your to your to your trees. You'll be surprised. You really get pretty detailed with all this stuff. But like I said, I'm going to end up covering a bunch of it up. All right. Okay, now some of these stones have dried, so I'm going to go back. Crooked trees are the best. <laughs> you know what's really good about crooked trees? They're really good for people whose hands shake like mine. <laughs> so, all right, I want to put a couple extra trees, a little extra, like 
a little bit of things back here. Just, just some suggestions of things back here. Just a few things back in the pack, back, back. So when we put some color on this with oils, it'll be, it'll drift back up in there. That stuff will pass on back, back in the dark. Or in the light, or whatever. You know, just interesting things to add. Alright. So anyway, Yovet, uh, Painting with Yovet is on YouTube. You guys should check her out. She, she's a good buddy of mine. And, uh, we have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun watching her paint. She's she's so interesting. All right, so let's get I'm gonna get my my uh, filbert brush back out <laughs> and fiddle around with these rocks a little bit more. With, but I think I'm gonna let me see if I got let me see if I have a color I need. Yeah, I'm gonna try right now. The paint the painting is pretty much all. Um, black and gray, and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to just add a little bit of. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Just a little bit. So I've got. I have this messy palette right here. So I'm going to put some. Raw umber on here. And some white. Try to add a couple little brown stones in here. Yeah. Better flatten that brush a little bit more though. So I'm double loading the brush. With brown on one side and white on the other. And then I'm just kind of tweaking the brush in here, just putting the edge in, a little bit of tilt, and just pull it, just pull it. To create these rocks, create these stones. And you can put as many color rocks as you want in yours too. I guess I'll see when, uh, if I remember correctly, Yvette, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we start painting the cliffside, we use some, some browns in there. I thought maybe this would be a nice reflection, of, or uh, not for reflection, a nice contributor to that. Maybe a little more umber on here for that rock. Alright, I need a little bit more umber. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use a, you know, the, the last one of these that, that you did, that, that I kind of did off of that, I did a whole series of different colors of paint. I think I did a purple one. I, and I, I may try that, kind of make a purple sky behind it. So actually, I kind of like putting this brown in here a little bit because it just kind of, it just kind of. <laughs> Alright, you know, I see exactly what you were talking about on your video about my brush is getting full. I'm going to have to wipe it out because my brush is getting full too. Alright. So I want a lot of bright colors. So make sure you put make sure you put all kinds of different sized rocks. You know, some big ones and some little ones. Sometimes you get going and you kind of, you know, you throw a whole bunch of the same size rock in and that's that's not what you see in a stream guys I mean if you want all your rocks to be the same size it's your planet your world I'm sure Bob would be glad for you to do that I can't speak for Bob I'm not a Bob Ross instructor but I'm a Bob Ross lover all right so there all right so let's put these things in there so this just kind of throws some extra color around a little bit there we go so now Pretty much all the stones are kind of overlaid. There's a couple little spaces in between. But this is all going to be underwater when we're done. Underwater or under land or whatever. When we're finished. So. Hey, Jonathan! How are you, my friend? Uh, let's come back with these couple that didn't suit me. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Jonathan, my man, how are you? All right, so there we go. That's that filled in pretty good. But when you're trying to work with that edge, what happens is um, it pulls the paint, pushes the paint over to the other side. So if you look at this brush, 
from this side you can see one side's clearly got more more paint on it than the other but you can't just flip it over like you do with oil paint because it's double loaded so it will create now I'll tell you what let's try I'll tell you what though, while I'm thinking about that let's try let's throw in a couple of rocks with brown on top and black on the bottom let's see what that does for us Yeah, okay, I like that. That's kind of okay. That rock here is a little too white for me. All right, here we go. A little too bright. All right. All right. All right, so there you go. Let me wash this brush out. I'm going to switch back to my script liner for a second because I've got a tree over here. I drew this tree and I forgot to put it. I didn't put enough branches on to suit me. I'd be doing fine if I'd stop knocking stuff over. My my studio is set up almost completely different from what it was after my daughter cleaned it. So <laughs> I'm having a little trouble here. All right, let's get. I need. Oh, I need to where that light go. Oh man, I'm having a ball. This is actually a painting that uh, Yvette Bronson did. She's on with us today too, on YouTube, and I just. I, first of all, I love her painting. Second of all, I just wanted to try to paint it. So I asked her if I could paint it on my stream, and she said yes. Yeah. So it's probably good because she's like, oh, well, if he can paint it, well, if he can paint it off my YouTube video, anybody should be able to paint it. He's a big flunky. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's a little, little better balance. I like that. Okay, anything else I want to throw in there? Yeah. All right, so let's leave well enough alone. For now, we'll, we'll, put, we'll, we'll put her around with it when it's good. Yeah. All right, when we when we put oil paint on it, still not quite as curvy as I wish it was, but I, I think it'll be okay. All right, so let's go to the next topic, which is preparing for this Halloween painting. Let me see the canvas. Just take a second. All I need to do is find my map color. And that's not it. looking for the wrong kind of bottle. My bad. In case you haven't figured this out, my studio is pretty small. All right. Uh, so I'm going to need, I'm using some Liquitex matte gel, flat matte gel. I'm going to be using a heat gun in a second, as soon as I get it down from here. You can use a hair dryer. Um, I just use a heat gun. Doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Except if you're using a heat gun, be careful with it. Don't. I mean, some heat guns can get up to like 2,500 degrees, and that will flat mess you up if you're trying to do this. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> Excuse me. We're going to paint a Halloween picture with a great big gigantic moon. And then some spooky trees and some spooky crows. And um, sitting around a cemetery when we're done. Hopefully. At least we hope so. I've never painted birds and I've never painted a cemetery, but it work. Alright, so this is just um <laughs> Yeah, I painted yours on a large canvas too. Uh, usually I do a 12 by 16, but I did a I did this for a 16 by 20 this time. I just wanted to have plenty of room. All right, so this is just contact paper that I'm using here today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put this on. Because interestingly enough, it might have been a secret or two Bob didn't tell you on the show. But some CRIs have told me, so that's good. What I'll be able to do is get the paper apart. 
Hang on a second. You can buy this. You can use refrigerator paper too, I hear. This is just regular contact paper. But I have used refrigerator paper in the past. Now in November, um, speaking of November, I'm hoping to stream several times this week because I'm home by myself, so, you know, give me something to do to keep me out of trouble. Mostly. Tomorrow i got to plant tulips, but it's only 150 of those, so I should be able to get those done fairly quickly. The uh, In November, though, I've got uh, some heart work to do, some heart work they're doing on me, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Should be fine, I hope. <laughs> All right, so this I got this great big round piece of contact paper, and I'm gonna put it right about where I think the moon's gonna go, because that is where the moon's gonna go. Now, if you just push this contact paper on to your canvas, depending on how much tooth your canvas has, there's a pretty good chance it's not gonna work the way you want it to. And I'll tell you why, it won't, it, it's, it's not gonna stick very well. So, it's a good idea to heat it. So I'm gonna heat this up real quick. Won't take long. Excuse the noise. It's my heat gun. Don't do this. Do not put your hand in front of the heat gun. It will cook you like a chicken. This will shrink it and activate the glue and it'll make it stick really, really well. You don't have to work all the wrinkles out. It's good to work out if you need to. I'll show you how we're going to get around some of that. Mm -hmm. I do not recommend you use it on high setting, ever, for that. Since it, since it strips paint off of the metal, might want to use a hairdryer if you got that. All right, I'm going to take this this uh, Liquitex matte medium and find one of my... Oh, look, I haven't even opened this. Ooh, fresh art supplies. Hey, Rosalie, how are you here? I do so enjoy talking to all you guys and meeting all you guys. It's so much fun. All right, so this stuff is white. If you look at it, it's white. But... In truth, it's, just, it's a matte color. When it dries, it's clear, and it's matte, so it won't won't interfere with anything else you're doing. So, Let's see, we have oh, something. This is relatively soft, so I'm just going to take some of this matte medium and go right around the outside of this edge. And basically, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of seal that canvas around the edge of this contact paper so that when I lay paint down around it, it's not going to bleed over. You may have noticed on some of Bob's, a couple of Bob's videos that he did, he kind of blended the clouds in, and that's that's why. Now, I don't know if they had this. I don't even know if they had this kind of a medium when Bob, uh, Bob was painting. that half and see that right It shrunk pretty good. It's just right here on this one edge. It just seems to be being contrary. But it's okay because this matte sealer will seal it up. It pulls up tight but it doesn't really shrink. This is contact paper. But this will push it down pretty good. It creates a nice seal all the way around. I actually learned this uh, from Nick Hankins. You know Nick, don't you? You bet. What a great guy. 
I'm so happy that Nick got married and he's having a baby and he's got he's working for Bob Ross now, but shh, I sure do miss him. I sure do miss from when he was single. I'm used to get to see him all the time. I used to see, him, see him quite a bit. He used to come here to Kentucky and I used to, to see him quite a bit. Let's see. But it's still got a little bit of a wrinkle right there. I'm trying to push that out. There we go. Here we go. Alright, so tomorrow, this will look pretty darn good. I'm trying to think, maybe I should go ahead and, um, uh, if it really do you guys any good to see me, uh, black this canvas out. But, I'm going to use a There we go. You can still see a little bit of a wrinkle right there, but it's not really pumped up on the canvas. It's like almost like an air bubble, but it's not going to bother what I'm trying to do, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. This is going to dry that mat faster than it shoots like this. There we go. There we go. Come on down. start so I'll sand just lightly I'll sand lightly around the outside of that and I'll tell you why so if you don't it's going to leave a little bit of a ridge in your paint it doesn't really show up in the painting so much it's just it's just knowing that it's there for the most part all right so I can't stay as long today as I usually do because I gotta cook my own dinner Good Lord of mercy. Got to cut my own dinner. Mm -mm -mm. Believe that or not. <laughs> All right. So, listen. I uh, hope to see you guys on. Maybe tomorrow we'll uh, get a chance to come back and, and uh, work on this other painting. And then um, uh, after that we will uh, do the Halloween painting. Here is uh, a bunch of script liners that I was about to throw away when uh, you'll bet actually put a video up about how to how to uh, recover brushes so um, I have uh, pulled all these out and cleaned them yesterday and t and uh, tonight I'm gonna oil them down with some baby oil I think they'll be ready to go again that'll save me a ton of money thank you Yobet. thank all of you guys for tuning in and we will see you on the next video